Welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 22 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about the commonly used built-in string functions that are available in SQL Server. Functions in SQL Server are broadly divided into two categories, user-defined functions and system functions. We haven't spoken about user-defined functions. We will be talking about them in a later session. In this session, we'll talk about all the available system functions. Now, if you want to see all the system functions that are available in SQL Server, expand programmabilities folder within that functions, system functions, and you should see you know, all the system functions available here categorized into their own categories depending on the functions they perform. Now, if, if you want to you know, aggregate values, then you use some of the aggregate functions like sum, count, etc. And if you want to work with date and times, we have date and time functions, which we'll be talking about in a later session. And similarly, if I want to work with strings, I have string functions. Today, we'll be looking at some of the commonly used string functions. Now, we have this ASCII string function. Now, we use ASCII string function to return the ASCII code value of the given character expression. Now, every character has got an associated ASCII code value. So if you want to retrieve the ASCII code value of a given character expression, then we use the ASCII function. Okay, let's see how to use that. So look at this, this is the ASCII function. Now select ASCII and look at this, the moment I open this parenthesis, you know, Visual Studio, SQL Server, I mean SQL Server, IntelliSense shows me, okay, this is expecting a varchar data type, an expression of type varchar, and this is going to return an integer. Okay, so this is this is one way of identifying what you need to pass to the function and what it returns to you back. Okay, another way is if you just exp expand the function itself, it should tell you, okay, the parameters that it is expecting is an expression of type char or var char and it returns an integer because ASCII code value is an integer between 0 and 255 it's going to return an integer for a given character expression okay so I want the ASCII code value for capital letter A so when we select that plus F5 65 is the ASCII code value for capital letter A. Now what happens if I say ABC if I pass three of the characters like this look at this because this is expecting a varchar okay ABC is a varchar so when I pass that what happens it's going to return the ASCII code value of the first character which is A in this case. Now if I just say get me the ASCII character value of BC, then it's going to give me the ASCII uh, code value of letter B, which is 66. Okay, so we use ASCII code, I mean ASCII function to return the ASCII code value of the given character expression. The next function that we commonly use is the character function. Okay, now what does this character function do? It converts an ASCII code to a character. Okay, now see the ASCII character reverses what ASCII, ASCII function does. Now ASCII function returns the ASCII code value whereas the character function returns the uh, character associated with the ASCII code value and we know that the ASCII code values are between 0 and 255. Okay, And we know the ASCII code value for capital letter A is 65. Now let's say I want to print alphabets from a through Z. How do I do that? You know, I can make use of this ASCII code and then create a loop and then print them. Let's see how to do that. Now let's say if I use the char function, look at this, when I expand you know, the IntelliSense it shows it is expecting an integer expression, an integer, and then what is it going to return to you? It's going to return a character. Okay, so for example, if I pass 65, you know that 65 is the ASCII code value of capital letter A. So when I press, you know, execute this, I should get letter A. Now let's say I want to print alphabets, capital letter alphabets from A through Z. How do I do that? I can use a while loop to do that and the char function. Let's do that. So declare a variable of type integer. Let's call that start integer initialize that to maybe 65 because capital letter A starts at 65 
so 65. And then what I want to do from 65, there are 26 alphabets in English language. So 65 plus 26 is um, 91. So 91 until 91. Okay. So while at start is less than or equal to 90, begin, end. What do we want to do? We want to print the character associated with that ASCII code value. So what we can do is select care of, instead of hard coding the value, what we want to do, we want to pass this integer variable. So when we pass this integer variable, you know, it loops through. First time it will be 65, so it will print capital letter A. Next, we need to increment that. So set at start is equal to at start plus 1. So we increment it by 1, 66. 66 is the ASCII code value of capital letter B, so that gets printed out. So instead of selecting it, we'll just print it. Okay, so let's execute this and see what's going to happen. It should print capital letter A through Z. Okay, so you can see A, B, C, D printed until Z. Now let's say I want to print small letters from A through Z. How do I do that? Very simple. You find the ASCII code value for small a. So press F5. 97 is the ASCII code value of small a. So 97 plus 26 is equal to 123. So what we want to do, we want to start at 97. And we want to loop through 122 and print that. So this time when we execute this query, it's going to print all the small cap I mean small alphabets. Okay? Similarly, if I want to print numbers 0 till 9, how do I do that? Get the ASCII code value of 0, which is 48. So start at 48 and then 48 plus 10 is 58. So 58 and then print that. That's about it. So 0 till 9, you know, maybe we want to say 57 because there is one extra colon printed. Okay, so this is how we can make use of the character function to print, you know, alphabets, whatever, numbers, etc. Okay, and then the other important functions that we commonly use is LTRIM. You know, the name itself is saying LTRIM, left trim trim on the left side. For a given character expression, it's going to remove the white spaces on the left-hand side of that character expression. Okay, let's see that in action. So, for example, let's say I have something like this. Select. There is a name. Okay, I have some spaces there. Hello. Now, when we execute this, it just shows that hello with the you know white spaces on the left hand side now let's say i want to remove those white spaces so if you want to remove the white spaces on the left hand side of the given string you can use the ltrim function and pass the string to that it's going to return you know a string that has the white spaces removed so we have the white spaces removed there okay now let's look at a practical example of applying this so select star from TBL employee. If you look at the rows in this table, look at the first name. You know, some of the names in this table have got, you know, spaces in front of them. Now let's say I want to remove all of the spaces in front of them. How can I do that? I can make use of this LTRIM function. So I want to say, I want first name and maybe middle name and last name columns. Okay, now when we execute this, we get all those columns, but the problem is, look at this, they are having these white spaces in the front and they don't look good. So if you want to remove the white spaces, you can simply use the LTRIM function and it should knock off those white spaces at the beginning of the name. And obviously, this column name, we have lost it, so we can give it an alias name if you want as first name. And you execute that. you should get the first name as expected. And similarly, along the same lines, we have R trim. If you want to remove the white spaces on the right-hand side of the given character expression, then you can make use of R trim function. So let's see how to do that. So let's say there is this hello word, and on the right-hand side, I have white spaces. Now, if I want to remove those spaces there, I can make use of R trim. 
plus F5. So it removes the white spaces on the right hand side. We can't see that, but it, it trust me, it removes them. Now let's say let's execute this. Now these names have got uh, you know white spaces on the right hand side as well. Okay, uh, so I, if you want to remove the white spaces on the right hand side, you can use our trim function. Let's see them first. Now let's say I not only want the first name, middle name, and last name, I, al I also want their full name. Okay, their first name, and then space, middle name, space, last name. How do I get that? First name, plus, give a small space, and then maybe middle name, and then give a space, and then last name. So essentially what we are doing here is we are concatenating the first name, middle name, and last name together using the plus sign. So now when we execute this, you should see the difference. Look at that. This is going to be our full name, the last column. Let's give it an alias called as full name. So if you look at this now, we have the full name, but look at this. Because of the spaces on the left and right side of the first name, they don't look right. Okay, so what we want to do is knock off the white spaces on the left hand side of the first name and the white spaces on the right hand side of the first name so that, look at this, Todd Kartner has got a lot of white space, you know, on the right hand side. So how do we remove both the left and right side white spaces? Use L trim and R trim together. Okay, so if you pass the first name here to L trim, what it's going to do, it's going to remove the white spaces on the left hand side and then return the string. For the returned string, remove the white spaces on the right hand side as well. So you're passing one function inside another function. So now when we execute this, look at what's going to happen for the output. It appears as we expect. First name, middle name and last name. Okay, so we can use L trim and R trim basically to remove white spaces on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the given character expression. And similarly, if you want to convert, you know, uh, letters into lowercase or uppercase, you can use lower and upper functions. Okay, let's see them in action. Um, let's say I want all the first names in the uppercase. So what you can do, you can use the upper function. So upper of this first name. Okay, and similarly, let's do that, you know, lower for last name. So last name is going to be converted into lowercase. Okay, so let's execute this. So look at that. All first names are converted into uppercase. All last names are converted into lowercase. Now, since you're using a function, you will lose the column name. If you want the column name, use the alias there. All right. So that's about upper and lower functions. And we have reverse function as well. If you want to reverse all the characters in the given string expression, you use reverse function. Let's say I want the names, the first names of the function, you know, the first name of the person to be reversed. Sam should be, S-A-M should become M-A-S. How can I do that? Use the reverse function. So when you use the reverse function, look at this. I'm chaining all these functions together, uh, okay? So reverse, so what's going to happen? It's going to reverse that SAM name, M-A-S, M-A-R, RAM. Okay, it's going to reverse that. Okay. Interestingly, it has again reintroduced that white spaces, but you know how to get rid of them. And then finally, length function. Length function can be used to calculate the length of the given string. Okay, so if you look at the name of the person, you know, the first name of the person, let's get the first name from TBL employee. So if you look at the first name, now I want the, their first name and the number of characters in their first name. How do I do that? Okay, this is the first name itself. So if I want to find the length, you know, the number of characters in their first name, I can use length function. Pass it the name of the column. That's all. And maybe you can give it an alias name. Maybe total characters. 
So when we execute this, you should see the first name and the total characters. And you and you and now you should understand. Look at this. There are only three characters, but I'm getting five characters. Why is that? Because there are white spaces at the beginning of the string. So two white spaces. That's why it's giving including those white spaces. Okay. So if you don't want to count the white spaces, then what you need to do is you need to first uh, L trim that, remove the white spaces at the beginning of the string. Now when we execute this, it should give us the correct count of the letters. Okay. Three, three. Okay. So this is correct now. On the right hand side, if you want to remove, okay, look at this, the count function, I mean the length function returns the count of total characters in the given string expression, excluding the blanks or white spaces at the end of the expression. Even if there are white spaces at the end of the expression, it doesn't count them. But if they are at the beginning or in the middle of a given string, then it counts them. Okay, so these are some of the you know commonly used string functions. We'll be talking about the rest of the commonly used string functions like char index, substring, etc. in the next video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.